Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video, and in today's video we're going to be doing a what if, being the thumb, what if, the, the thumbnail of the what if is right here, this is going to be a universal intro from now on, so yeah, I'm sorry about that, until I can get more time, because I do have school, summer school at least, I won't be able to post any really good intros, so this is going to be an intro for a while. So, hope to see you later. Join the Discord server, link in the description, and let's get in to the what if. So today's what if guys is going to be what if series is going to be what if Deku was Sasuke's reincarnation. I know two of my hero what ifs back to back. Be honest, I'm mostly only coming up with my hero what ifs. So you guys might get a whole month or two of my hero what ifs with me dropping some Naruto movies with those months. So you guys might start getting one mo not one Naruto movie per week. Seeing as how I do one Naruto what if every week. Now I if you go check out the Aristotle Clan channel link in the description, I will be posting there this week what if I'm a read very um a redone variation, like I'm completely doing the story over variation of what if Nar what if Sasuke gave Naruto a Sharingan. So yes, go check that out when and, um I'll put the channel down there. Go watch the original and then when I post the second when it finish the series, let me know what you guys think. But if that's all, let's get start the what if. Now this what if starts all kicks off with a seven year old Deku and his mother Inko being in the alleyway or go actually being in the street at, at night. Now Deku and Inko would turn around as they had just heard something, but when turning around they would see nothing. So turning back around they would then turn around to see a man. Now Inko would recognize this man. This is her supposed husband, Hizashi Midoriya. As she then sees as Hizashi's hair turns white. As Hizashi says, you can't hide him from me forever, Inko. I told you I was only in this so that I could take his quirk. Now hand him over. As Inko screams, tells Deku to run. But Deku doesn't. He gets in front of his mother. But... The man would then reach out his hand and would then touch Deku to remove Deku's quirk, which would have been a pyrokinesis quirk, because Deku's father, Hisashi, would have been. Well, if you tell, can tell by me telling you what his quirk was, this all for one who, who just, who basically made a fake name and all these things, and became Hisashi Midoriya, um, and things like that. But yes. Now, Inko would then ask Sashi what did he do to their son. Now, Deku would hear this before passing out. But Hisashi doesn't know. He wasn't supposed... He put a little bit too much power and drained it too fast for his son. Because he didn't want him to not... He didn't want Deku to pull away and for him to not be able to take the quirk fully. Because if he only took half the quirk, then he would get probably either his half or Inko's half of the quirk. And if he took the other half, then yeah, yeah. but you obviously you can tell. He needs to take the full quirk. So his actually your all for one had taken the quirk too fast, which would have actually made Deku extremely weak. Now, his actually seeing this would we'll see um and you know, Deku hearing this, that this man is his father, had just attacked his mother and him would have basically, you know, passed out. And Deku would not wake up until months later. And there's a reason why. So we're going to get into why Deku didn't wake up until months later. Now, Deku, um, Deku would have basically had... Um, I might start posting three-minute what-ifs. I'm just kidding, guys. But Deku um, would have woken up. And when he would have woken up, he would have noticed that he was in a house... An older variation of the Japanese styles of house, of housing. Deku sees a man, a man with long black hair, a cloak on, a black cloak on, 
and from what Deku can tell by the imprint, has a sword. As the man turns around and says, finally, you're here. As Deku says, who are you? He says, I am Sasuke Uchiha, and you are my reincarnation, Izuku Midoriya. Deku will be awed by this. Deku then asks, what's a reincarnation? As Sasuke will explain, um, the reincarnation, uh, what a reincarnation was, saying that he was also a reincarnation of someone else, but he decided to reincarnate into the world when the world will need his power once more. And Sasuke will then tell Deku that he's going to give him his power, his memories back, but he's going to have to train his powers for the next, what, decade or two, so yes, I will be making you a college-like applicant, um, college-like, um, school, a college school, basically. Now, Deku would, not uh, when Sasuke would then tap, poke Deku on the forehead, Deku would then see as Sasuke's fingers were covered in a red liquid, being blood. As Sasuke says, I also left the memory of where I left my sword and where the old Uchiha compound is. Where, where the one I grew up in and the one that I had owned myself. All of my belongings are there. Go there when you're ready to start training. As Deku would nod, Deku would wake up months later as his body had to get acclimated to his new inrush of power. His hair had grown. It had, instead of being green like his mother's once was, it is now black. His facial structure had changed. He had gotten a little bit taller, not too tall. Because then again, this is a seven-year-old. Deku don't need him being a, what, Sasuke's foot, 5'11", 6 foot, 5'11", 5'10", 5'9". He's in one of those numbers. I don't need a seven-year-old Deku being that tall. That's just freakishly tall, especially for so, 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 someone of Sasuke's stature who isn't even tall. So Deku um, will wake up eventually from his coma, or well, what the doctors would label as a coma, except for the fact that well, that's kind of actually what it was. Well, Deku's, Deku was kind of like a, a caterpillar going through metamorphosis. I, I don't think that's the right word, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, he was and basically his body was the cocoon. Well, there was no cocoon surrounding him, but he was undergoing changes, basically. So when Deku would wake up, the doctors would be extremely shocked. They seen Deku's body changing, but didn't think that he would wake up anytime soon. I'm sorry if you guys can hear the firecrackers. These people, uh, the people out here aren't really, um, not stopping popping fireworks. I understand for July. I, I, honestly, I don't see the fun in popping fireworks, really. They, they, they look, they scare me. Especially where I'm at. So, you never know if it's a firework or something else. But, yeah. Moving on. Now, when Deku will wake up, the doctors will look at Deku with a sad face. Anyways, the doctors will look at Deku. I say then Deku then asks where his mother is. The do Deku then sees as his do the doctors begin to look away from him. As Deku begins to worry, as Deku begins to ask what happened to his mom, as the doctor says, your yeah, mother, she didn't make it. We don't know what happened, but when we got to you, she. She was no longer alive, kid. As Deku will be struck by this. Deku knows what will happen to him now that his mother is now gone. And he knows that his father is the one that probably did this to her. Deku would then decide, there and there, to vow revenge against his father. And this is before the All Might fight. So yes, Deku has, um... All for one has not yet fought Deku, so he um and things like he has not yet fought All Might at least. So yeah, there's that. <clears throat> now Deku will um get up as the Duchess was then tell Deku he can't leave without a without a guardian. As Deku looks at him and says he doesn't need any of their help, as they try to restrain Deku, 
only for something weird to happen. Deku's eyes begin to morph, with one turning red, with a with 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 a one with two no with one comma coming in to that eye, but the other the other turned purple. With three com no with two commas in the eye. Yes, I'm going to be giving um, Deku's running on a um, a um, a progressive stage. As Deku, um, I'm sorry, Deku would have then went on to walk all across Japan up until reaching the countryside. And think about it, you guys were like, yo, that's kind of crazy. Ninjas were walking, were literally traveling through it around a continent within weeks to get to another spot. It took them like a week or so of traveling. With rest, also to get to other parts of con of a continent, they were all in part part of one continent, being the elemental nations. So think about it; it wouldn't be so shocking to see Deku is basically, um, you know, that to see basically see that Deku could travel. Now it would take him a lot longer than a week. It would take him around two months. I don't know why I didn't say state this, but Deku had traveled for two months of straight walking. Only since is the sense of is the only way he knows he's where he's going is because of Sasuke's memories. As Deku will finally arrive, as Deku begins to send Chakra to his um, which eye is Sasuke's running on it? I believe. It's in his left eye, so in his right eye. He will send Chakra to his right eye. Only to see again Jutsu. Oh, placed over a certain part of the forest. Or across this, these ruins of sorts. Deku has now made it to the Uchiha compound in Konoha. So. Deku... Would now basically, um, Deku would basically now uh, walk into the compound, he would then begin to walk around where he would then see Sasuke's cloak and will also see a jar. Sasuke's original eyes are there. Now, um, I do want Deku's Renegon, um, starting on to be the same pattern as Sasuke's EMS and everything. So once Deku finally wakes the EMS starting on, I will have him, you know, basically, get, um, implant Sasuke's eyes into himself. Now, Deku would then begin to put Sasuke's clothes on, or at least his getting very variation of his clothes. I want to say the black, the, the clothes on the chin and his arms, the black variation. That is what Deku will be wearing from now on. And Deku would also pick up Sasuke's sword and his headband, putting them both on. As Deku would begin his training. Now one day, while this is like a year at the start of his training, Deku would be in the forest where he would then meet up with a snake. No, 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 no. Yeah, a snake. But this is no. Well, this is actually no. Deku, I, I was gonna have this determine what summoning contract he's gonna get. He's gonna still have Sasuke's hawk and snake's contract since that's actually in the compound. So Deku would actually meet up with a um, small pet wolf or a small wolf. As Deku will see the wolf is very injured, so Deku will take the wolf in and will come become very close to this wolf. Now you guys already see what I'm doing since I have not yet and since Deku does have met Bakugo, all the things that happen, Bakugo did start picking on Deku. He does still view Deku as quirk or as useless. And things like that. Um, so yeah. Deku would have basically taken care of this wolf and watched it as it fully grown. He would have trained with this wolf. 
But one day, once Deku had returned from hunting, Deku would have walked over to where his wolf normally is, only to see the wolf is there. And the wolf is there, bloodied. As the wolf was attacked while it was um was was attacked while Deku was gone. Deku then see Deku then begins to see as his best friend, which was this wolf, his pet wolf, the wolf that he had had died. Now Deku would begin to shed tears. But soon those tears will turn to blood as his eyes begin to bleed. As Deku feels an immense stabbing pain in his eyes. As immediately the forest right in front the forest part right in front of him begins to catch on fire with a black flame. As Deku finally closes his eyes. As Deku then adds chakra to his other eye, the purple one, that stayed permanently purple. As Deku then looked at him, as he then put out, the, as the flames were then somehow put out, Deku doesn't know how he did it, but he put those flames out. But Deku was soon passed out after doing this, and Deku would resume his training. Once waking up, Deku would resume his training. And for the next three years, Deku would start training and would have eventually mastered all of his Mangekyo abilities. But Deku would have noticed something. He was on the verge of going blind. So Deku would have done what Sasuke had done. Deku would have took out both of his eyes, seeing as how the other one had also not morphed, but would have also began to deteriorate also. Deku would then implant Sasuke's original eyes within him. As Deku's the same those eyes began to morph into Sasuke's eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. And then the other begins to morph into Sasuke's Rinnegan, a full six tomorrow's Rinnegan. As Deku then grabs his eyes and puts them in a jar before sealing them away onto one of his seals that is inscribed onto his body. As Deku thinks that it's finally time that he returns back to um, civilization of sorts so that he can continue in school. So Deku would turn back to civilization. Deku would know that he doesn't really have a house to go back to, but he would return to school. Well, he would actually go to to, to the school that he was supposed to attend to. This is actually the same school, just in a much higher grade. As I said, it's been four years, so Deku's around 12. So I believe that's what, fifth grade? So Deku would have went to his elementary school, which I forgot, I don't think, it, I don't know if it was stated in the anime, uh, I haven't read the manga, but in the anime, if Deku, if, um, if their school, elementary school's name was ever mentioned, but since I'm just going to say it wasn't, so I wouldn't really know, so yeah. But when Deku would um, walk in, the principal would then ask Deku who is he. And Deku would then say Izuku Midoriya. Now the principal remembers Deku. This is the this is one of his students, the quirkless one. But he also went missing. As the principal then grabs Deku and then pulls him into his office before then calling the police. As the principal then tells Deku, does he know how? Um, does he? Where has he been? A lot of people have been worried about him. His godmother. Um, Mits um, Mitsuki, I believe it's Miski Bakugo. Miski has been looking all over for for years. Seeing his house and sees Deku's godmother, she was the next alarm to take care of him if anything ever happened to Inko. I'm sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> anyways. Um, when the police would arrive, they would see Deku, and they would then begin to ask him questions. Where did he go? Deku tells him that he went into the woods, deep inside, deep in the country's side of Japan, where no one would bother him, as he trained for years. Now, he's not yet on adult Sasuke's level, but he's pretty high, and does know all of Sasuke's jutsu. He just can't use them to that extent yet. As the police will finish their questioning before calling Inko in 
Uh, or not Inko, Misuki and to come and get Deku. Now, Misuki seeing Deku would be extremely happy. But she hugs Deku and asks where has he been all this time. As the police inform her that Deku's been in the countryside of Japan for the, um, for the past four years. As Inko, um, not Inko, Misuki then begins to tell Deku, um, begins to ask Deku why did he go there. Deku says to train. He says he knows who killed his mother and that he's training so that he can take care of that man himself. Miski had already known about Hisashi trying to take Deku's quirk. Quirk being a quirk take can be allow him to take Deku's quirk. So, um and Miski knows that this was part of part of the reason why Inko had named her godmother. In case anything happened to her, she could take Deku. As Miski would then tell Deku that they're going to, um, that she's going to take him home. As she would then ask the principal to bring, um, Bakugo here. Um, bring Bakugo to the front office that she doesn't really feel like coming back to get him later. So to just bring him here now. So the principal would call for Bakugo and he would obviously come up. Now, Bakugo would be shocked upon seeing the person in front of him. He, no, actually, no. He would ask his mother who was this in front of him. As Inko, um, not damn, why do I keep saying Inko? Miski would then tell Bakugo that this is Izuku. Does he not remember him? As Bakugo would scoff and says, what does he want? Why is he here? No one wants a useless person like him. As Miski tells Bakugo to shut up, that Deku has just been found after living after leaving for four years. He acts like he doesn't care. And Bakugo says, because I don't. Miski will shake her head and would then just leave with both Bakugo and Deku. Deku will eventually be enrolled in high school and will begin with continue his training. Traveling um traveling to the actually using his Renegon abilities to travel back to the compound to train every day when and using a shadow clone to go to school for as we do know sasuke does not shadow clone jutsu so this is where we're going to get into a time skip to around the start of the anime which is actually i believe deku's last year in high school but in the anime was last year in middle school so just translate that over and that's actually where I'm going to be picking golf. Now I'm just kidding. I might make this like a 30 minute part one. It doesn't matter. I got to get this video out as soon as possible though. So yeah. Anyways, moving on. Deku would have basically um, have grown pretty strong. And at this moment, Deku is just as strong and has inherited the Sage of Six Patch Chakra. Yes, Hakuromo Otsutsuki had came to Deku and had given him some of his chakra, half of his chakra like he did with Sasuke. But no visible changes would have happened except for the fact that Deku's chakra reserves is skyrocketed. And unlike Sasuke, Deku isn't in a war, so he wouldn't have used all that all of the six sage of six pass chakra within him. So he would have this chakra would have actually began to grow within Deku, giving him massive reserves on par with that of Naruto. So, Deku has a lot of chakra, and Deku in skill has grown to the level of a 18-year-old Sasuke, which I believe was, no, he was 19 when he destroyed that meter, so why not say a 19-year-old Sasuke? Um, but he's currently 18 in his last year of middle school. Now, Deku would have basically done Gwent, and, um, why did I say this? What do I want to do? Ah. Yes, Deku would have had, um, this is actually, what do I do, what do I, hold on guys, let me think about what to do. Now, Deku would have just walked in class when his teacher would walk in behind him, saying, uh, good morning class, today we're going to have a busy, busy schedule, today we're going to be doing, fill, filling out career aptitude, um, we're going to be doing a career aptitude test, or a college aptitude test, yeah, a career aptitude test. But he would then throw the paper up in the air saying, Don't worry, no need to do that because I know you all want to become heroes. As the entire class begins to cheer, but Deku sits there quietly. For years, Deku has kept to himself rather than being the outgoing Deku that we all know. Deku would have become quiet, somewhat distant to a lot of people. 
Deku thought about revenge a lot. He does still want to retain revenge, but he's seen what revenge did to Sasuke. He doesn't want to go down that path. We does have one end goal to take down. Not instead of God dang. Instead of killing his father, he's going to or take. He was going to take him down as a pro hero, as a hero. So, um, when the teacher would then um begin to go through schools, and he would then mention that Bakugo applied for UA. And Bakugo tells the teacher not to lump him in with the rest of these extras. When the teacher would look at his R, Dek Izuku, you also applied to UA, which would shock Bakugo. As far as he knows, Deku doesn't have a quirk, but Deku does train a lot. As Bakugo is extremely angered by this, he says, as he looks at Deku, says, Don't even think of going to UA. We live in the same household. So there's nowhere for you to go to get away from me. As Deku was then look at Bakugo, before then looking back towards the window, ignoring Bakugo completely. Now, when the eventually at the end of the day, when the teacher would leave, Deku began to walk out of class and Bakugo and his goons would get in front of him and would try to attack Deku. But De ba Deku would take down the two goons of Bakugo, but before Deku could do anything, since his Sharingan is inactivated and his other eye is already covered, Bakugo would have launched an explosion, hitting Deku, sending Deku flying into the wall. It's Bakugo would then tell Deku, don't even think of applying to UA. I won't say it again. As he, as he begins to walk, as he then tells Deku, you know what, Deku, there's another way for you to get a quirk. How about you take a swan dime to dive off the roof and pray for a quirk in your next life? As he begins to walk away, as Deku then disappears in a body flicker, as he begins to head towards a place, towards his old house, Deku frequents, frequently heads towards his old house. Seeing as how it's technically still his house, he just hasn't inherited since he isn't of age yet. Well, he's not yet. Well, he actually should be of age. So Deku can live there now, but Deku doesn't live there yet. As Deku, when Deku would then begin to go under an underpass, Deku would then hear as the sewage label then come up. As Deku would turn on his starring gun, as he then sees as a massive sludge is there. As Deku would start um, dodging all the sludges attempts to grab him. As Deku would then see the sludge's eyes, before then implementing a genjutsu, paralyzing the sludge. Now, if you, I believe you guys seen that genjutsu that uh, Itachi put Orochimaru under, the uh, where he had those stakes placed into him to keep him in place, like that. So, Deku would then begin to walk away. As he would then hear, and I am here, as all my walk. As he would then see the sludge villain is stuck there. As All Might then said, um, what happened? As he looks against look around only to see Deku there staring at him with his with a red eye with two with three commas in it. As All Might then began to ask Deku, does he know what happened? As Deku says, he tried to attack me, so I placed him under an illusion. He's constantly he's now paralyzed. How fun. As All Might would then begin to ask Deku, would tell Deku to wait. As he would then ask Deku, what is his quirk? As Deku says that he's quirkless, the illusion is just a trick that he put put up, that he um that he learned throughout the years of training. And All Might would be shocked. He had never heard of such training that can allow someone to put someone under an illusion and to change their eyes. But he's not going to question it. As but Deku begins to walk away. So does All Might. But as in canon, except for Deku, there's no Deku, but All Might does still drop the villain. So when Deku would head towards his house and we begin to walk back towards the Miskis, Deku would then see an explosion off in the area. But Deku recognizes the explosion's energy. As Deku then jumps, begins to hop from building to building, running towards where the explosions are coming from. To see, to jump down in front of the heroes. As the heroes then see... Deku drop down. As Deku's one eye, red eye is glazing, is staring, glaring at the sludge villain. As the 
Sludge Brother says, <laughs> You again. I'll make sure I'll kill you this time. As All Might in the crowd is watching, as Deku then begins to run towards the Sludge Brother. As this is when Deku would then be. Uh, no one notices, but Deku's sword begins to let off a, a humming noise as it begins to glow a light blue, the color of lightning. As Deku unsheathes his arm, um, as well as his arm, um, then brings his sword down. But only enough not to cut the villain, but only enough for it to touch him. As the villain then is. The, everyone then sees as the. As the villain is basically looks like it's being electrocuted by Deku. <clears throat> as Deku would then grab Bakugo before then jumping back. As All Might would then appear behind Deku, says, No worries, because I am here. Before then yelling, I believe it was either Detroit Smash or Texas Smash or United States Smash. It was, it was a smash, I know that. <laughs> so he would I'm gonna say he yells Texas Smash before then hitting the sludge villain, separating it into multiple pieces. As this would end the sludge villain incident for for um what the people would dub as the sludge villain incident. Now the heroes would then begin to question Deku on what his quirk is, but once they learned that Deku's quirk was they would then begin to scold him and yell at him for being reckless, saying that he doesn't have a quirk and he could have gotten injured, or better yet, had gotten Bakugo killed. But the vi heroes would then begin to, um, uh, they would begin to praise Bakugo. Deku seeing this, Deku would then push past the heroes that are currently yelling at him. As Deku begins to walk back towards Miski's, and so does Bakugo. As Bakugo catches up with Deku and tells him, Deku. I don't care what you think you did today, but you didn't save me. I didn't need your help. That's all I had to say. As Bakugo walks away, or walks in front of Deku, and turns the street, and when Deku is about to walk away, continue walking, this is where a blur would appear in front of him. As All Might would say, I am here again. As Deku would then look at All Might and says, Hello, All Might. What are you doing here? As All Might would then ask Deku, what exactly is his quirk? As Deku says his quirk was like he said. He says, then what about that life? As Deku says, mm. well, as Deku would then decide to come up with a lot. As Deku would say, I have the sword built by someone. And the sword can emit lightning pulses. Or can someone emit electricity? <clears throat> as All Might would think, oh, that's pretty neat. As All Might would then tell Deku, No Midoriya, you showed me courage today, and you've helped me push past my limits. You showed me what it's like to become a, to be a real hero again. So, for that, I would like to thank you. But I would like to also like to offer you something. As Deku would say, what is it? As All Might would then say, I would like to offer you my quirk. As Deku begins to be intrigued by this, he never knew that you could offer someone with Quirk. As All Might would then begin to explain his Quirk, saying that it could be passed on, and that he is the seventh holder of the Quirk. Deku's extremely shocked by this, but, you know, doesn't show it on his face. So, De All Might would then ask Deku. What does he think? Does he want to accept his quirk? As Deku would then tell All Might, he doesn't care. He'll accept it if that's what All Might wants. As All Might would then say, good, that's, that's very good. Meet me at Tacoma Beach tomorrow morning. And this is where I'm going to be ending call part one of What If Deku with Sasuke's Reincarnation. I hope you guys enjoyed the What If. Um, and then guys let me know if you like the thumbnail that was used for this video it was actually a thumbnail style created by Elvis or Elvis I believe some people call him Elvis I call him that because I already know how to pronounce that but it is his style but I didn't make the thumbnail I just basically used his style to make it so I will credit him for the style but it, I made the thumbnail myself 
So, yes, I will try and find find out what his channel is, and I'll credit him down in the description. Join the Discord server. I will see you guys in the next part. Peace and goodbye. Shukage out.